In this video, we're going to look at the alerts in Dynamics 365 Customer Voice. Now, I've done a blog and a video about alerts previously, about how you can create the rules and then actually go ahead and assign those alerts out to people. But one of the things with Customer Voice is not everyone's necessarily going to be having access to it. It's used to set up the surveys and then send out the responses. Um, but it might be that you've got a group of people that maybe work in the customer services department that are going to be responsible for following up on any of these alerts, but they don't necessarily need access to customer voice itself. So one of the things that we can do is we can use Microsoft Teams to go ahead and actually manage these alerts and then assign them to somebody directly from within Teams. Um, there's millions and millions of people that are using Microsoft Teams now especially in this day and age. So I thought it might be a good idea to look at how to do that. So here we can see within customer voice, we've got some alerts that have come through and that's based on the rules we've set up to say, um, if there's a detractor created or if there's negative sentiment, low um, CSAT score, whatever it might be, we're going to have an alert created. So what we're going to do is within Teams, we've got two different channels that I've created and we're going to have it to where we can see an alert that comes through that says, OK, we've received this new alert from customer voice. Then we can have the information be displayed about that. And then we can assign that alert out to somebody. Once it's assigned, we'll have it show up in here and we'll be tagging the user to say they've been assigned a new alert. All right. So let's go ahead and look at our flow in Power Automate. So the very first thing that we want is the trigger condition. So that trigger condition is going to be from the common data service current environment. Yes, it's Dataverse, but it's still called the common data service um, uh, connector. So we're going to use that and we're going to use the one that is um, allows us to trigger it based on the create. That's all we care about. So when there's new alert created and that's the table name or the entity is the customer voice alert and the scope is organization. Now, the next step is really purely for aesthetics is just so that in the notification, we can show which survey this alert has come from. Why is it being triggered? And for that, we're going to do a get record step from the same connector, the common data service connector. And we're going to go ahead and pick the table name of customer voice surveys. And we're going to use the survey value from the um, uh, step above where we've got a new alert created and if you just search for survey, then we're going to use that survey value and that will um, get the related survey that this trigger, um, sorry, that this alert is triggered from. All right. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use um, a step from the Microsoft Teams connector. Now, that step, the name of it is post an adaptive card to a Teams channel and wait for a response. I've just renamed it to post card to Teams. And what this is allowing us to do is to actually create an adaptive card, which means that we can set it up and have interactions with the card so that we can allow someone to click some buttons, select the correct person and then go ahead and assign it. Now, the first thing we want to do is pick the team, then we're picking the channel. So I'm assuming I've got this channel, this um, admin channel where only certain people will have access to it. And that's where those alerts will be posted. All right. So what we can do is we can create the card using this adaptive cards um, site from Microsoft. And this would actually allow us to pick an example to start from or a template and we can see what it would look like. Um, and I actually used uh, this one to kind of give me an idea where when I click on buttons, I can then see like some kind of uh, choices or option set that would be displayed. So I use that as kind of a starting point. Now, I'm not going to go through all of this and the entire um, JSON um, schema is on my website, which there's a link to that below in the video description. But a couple of things just to point out. First thing is I wanted to have an image display at the top. So that is pulling in an image from a URL where it's hosted on my site. Then what I've got is I wanted to display a bit of information about the alert so that when somebody's looking at it, they might know, oh, okay, here's who I'm going to assign it to. So we've got the subject, we've got the survey name that it's regarding, and then we've got the customer name and the customer email. So I'm pulling those values in 
from that um, step that was the first one where we actually were triggering it when the alert was created and we're pulling those things in. Then what I've got is where I'm actually creating my choice set input. So that is that um, list of people that's going to be displayed. And then what I'm doing is I'm putting in a choice for each person that could potentially have this alert assigned to them. <clears throat> so we've got the title, which is the name of the person that will be displayed on the card. And the value is what will be pulled and stored in the background so that we can then use that email address and actually then find the person in Dynamics and then assign it to them, all of that kind of stuff. So if we then go down, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do a list record step. And for this, I'm looking in the users table and I'm going to do a filter query and I'm going to use the domain name, which is basically the, that email address equals. And what I'm able to do is I'm able to use the outputs from that step above and I'm able to use get the user that we're pulling through. Now, the fact that it's called the user, we can see right here is that input input choice set has an ID of user. So that's what I'm pulling through. And what I'm going to end up with is the value. So my query will end up being domain name equals whatever that email address was for the user that was selected. Now, once I've got the user, we then have an apply to each step. Now there should only be one record that comes through, so that's fine. And I could even put a top count and just put one in there so it would only ever bring one. But um, in most environments, um, you're only going to have one person with that email address. And what we're going to do now is we're going to actually assign that alert. So we're going to do an update record step from the Common Data Service Connector. And we're going to do the table name of customer voice alert. And this time when we're finding the correct alert, which is the one that triggered this flow, we're going to be using the activity. So if I do activity, it's the unique identifier of the activity from the new alert created step. So that initial trigger. Then what I need to do is do show advanced options. And we can see here that we've got the assignee email and assignee name. Those are fields that are on the actual alert record. And I'm going to use the primary email and the full name from the get user step and update those. And then I'm going to go to the owners field and I'm going to do system users. And within the brackets, I'm going to put the user ID. So if I just go ahead and type in user, it's going to be the unique identifier for the user. So that's going to allow us to link that um, alert within Dynamics 365 and actually update it. All right, so if we scroll down, the next thing that I want to do is when this alert has been assigned to the person, I want to mention them in Teams and actually let them know. So what we can do is use this um, step from the Teams connector, get at mention token for a user. And all I need to do is put in the primary email from that get user step. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to then post a message in the alerts assignment channel. And you can do a couple of things. You can post as the user, you can post as a flow bot, you can post in a channel. Um, if you post as the flow bot, you can post it in a chat. So my rationale was that um, maybe somebody is actually on holiday, on leave, and we don't know. Um, so if we post it in a channel where other people can see it, even though they don't get the app mention, if somebody knows that that person is out of the office, maybe they can pick it up instead. So now what we're going to be doing is using the at mention um, step from that one where we've got the at mention token for the user. So that will be meaning that they will get a notification in Teams. And then we're able to pull in something else that I'd added, which was a field to put in comments that would be posted to the user when we fill out that adaptive card. I'm then pulling in those same fields, subject regarding survey, customer name and customer email. And then finally, I'm creating a link that's just basically going to allow them to click on it and then open up that alert directly within Dynamics. OK, so let's go ahead and look at this. Now, I've triggered this already. If I go into the alerts admin channel, we can see here that an alert has been received from customer voice. And the subject is negative sentiment. And it was from the individual case feedback survey. The customer is Jane Doe and there's their email address. 
So anyone that has access to this channel can then go ahead and click on assign alert. And now they can see, okay, well, who should this be assigned to? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to assign this one to Jackie. And I'm going to say, Jackie, And I'm going to fill out um, as much information as I want for a comment to Jackie. And then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now, what I have in this step here is at the bottom of the step where we've created the adaptive card, I have this update message. Now, what we're doing is we're basically saying, OK, well, when somebody is assigned this alert to someone, we want to update the card with a message that says the alert's been assigned. So we can see there that it's been assigned and who responded to that, which means that anybody else that has access to this channel would be able to see that it'd been taken care of. Now, there we can see if I go into the alerts assignment, if Jackie was logged in, she would have had a notification because we've tagged her. And if we then open it, we can see there's that message that was typed into the adaptive card so she can see more information and then she can go ahead and click and the new customer voice alert and she can be taken directly into that alert within Dynamics. We can see that she is the owner of that and it's got her name in the assignee email and the assignee name field on the record. If we then go into customer voice, let's just go ahead and refresh this page and we'll go back into alerts. And now we can see there is the negative sentiment that she was just assigned and we can see that it's been assigned to her within Dynamics 365 customer voice. So that's a way in which you can manage those alerts that are coming from customer voice, but manage them within Microsoft Teams because maybe that's where you're spending most of your day. It's a little bit faster and not everybody needs to have access to customer voice in order to do it. The only thing that you would need to um, take into consideration is that if somebody is going to have this alert assigned to them, they would need to have access to um, uh, the activity entity or the activity table because the, the customer voice alert is an activity. So just make sure that the security roles that they have, that at least one of those roles has access to the activity entity. So I hope this helps. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you started using adaptive cards in Teams? Um, they're not necessarily new, but there's certainly more and more reasons to use them. And now that so many people are using Teams, it's definitely a great place to allow people to use them and manage things from those adaptive cards. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Hi, I'm Megan Walker. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it. If you don't want to miss out on any other content, you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.